often times we want a different data source for test than for production or have a different logging level in different environments. In this video, we will see how to use Spring profiles to have different code or configuration to kick in for different environments without having to change the code. We will see how to have different pieces of code take effect in different environments, say dev versus prod, how to specify different log configurations for different environments, and finally, how to specify specific property values for different environments. Then we will specify the profile dev or prod when starting our Spring Boot app and see the relevant settings take effect for that environment. Here I have Spring Tool Suite running on my machine, which is a flavor of Eclipse. Let us create a new project by clicking File, New, Other, Spring Boot, Spring Starter Project and call it Profile Demo. Click Next. Let's choose from the Web node, Web, from the Templates node, Time Leaf. Click Finish. Let's create the controller package and class. So right click on the base package, choose New Package, call it com.example.demo.controller, click finish. Create a new class by right clicking and choosing new class and calling it hello controller. Click finish. Let us mark it with the controller annotation. Let's create a request mapping for the root. Create a method say hello which takes in the model. Let's return the name of the view hello which this controller is returning. Fix the imports. Now let us create a new interface and call it hello interface. It just has one method get greeting. Let's create a new class hello class dev which implements this interface. So let's add it. Click OK and then finish. Let's have this method return hello from dev. Now we want that this class should only be used when we are running our app in the dev environment. So first, mark it as a component for spring scanning. Next, using the add profile, we specify the profile, dev or prod or whatever name you want to give inside. In this case, we want this component to be used in dev only. So let us put dev here. You can specify multiple profiles separated by commas. Let us create another class and call it hello class prod. And this is the one we want to be used only for production environment. Let's make it implement hello interface. Add the unimplemented method. Inside, here let us return hello from prod. Mark it as a component and with the profile keyword, let's specify prod. So the hello class dev will be in effect in the dev environment and hello class prod in prod environment only. Let's go back to the controller and create a variable of type hello interface and call it hello class. Let's auto wire it. Fix the import. So Spring will inject hello class dev or hello class prod based on the profile which is in effect. Inside the method, let's create a variable greeting and retrieve the value from hello class dot get greeting. Add it to the model as an attribute greeting. Next, let us see how to specify different property values for dev and production. So let us copy application.properties file and paste it. Let's name it application hyphen the profile name. So application hyphen dev. So application hyphen dev for the dev profile. Similarly, let us create another one for the prod profile, application hyphen prod. Let us say we want to specify the logging level as debug for dev and specify a logging file by the name of dev.log in our home slash demo slash documents slash doc folder. Let us copy these settings, go to our prod application dot properties file. Let us make the logging level as error and the name of the log file as prod.log. So we want the appropriate settings in their respective environments. Let us make a common property, my property in application.properties file, which will be picked by both environments. Now to demonstrate that it is working, 
Let us get the property's value using the value annotation with the property name within curly braces and the dollar sign. Get it in the variable name logging file. Similarly, let us get the my property value in a variable my property. Let us append these to the greetings variable which will be then shown on the web page. Speaking of web page, let us create that next. So let's go to source main resources, then templates, where Timeleaf expects the templates. Right click and choose new and from the web node HTML file. Name is hello, the same name our controller is returning. Inside, let's add the Timeleaf namespace. Close the tags as Timeleaf is strict. Inside the div, let's put within span using th colon text the Timeleaf variable greeting within curly braces and with dollar sign. To demonstrate how to indicate which profile the Spring Boot app should use, let's create a run configuration in which we pass it as a JVM argument. So right click and choose run as and then run configuration. Go to Spring Boot and click on new configuration. Let's select the main class to run. Name the profile as dev profile. We can choose the profile as dev from the drop down or you can also specify it as a JVM argument which is used when we start the app. So hyphen dspring.profile.active as dev. Let's apply it. Now to create one for prod, right click on the dev one, choose duplicate, name it prod profile. We can choose the prod profile from the drop down or change it as the VM argument. Specifying it as a JVM argument is good enough and we do not need to specify it over here. Let's apply and close. There are several other ways to specify to Spring Boot which profile to use. Like for instance, in our application.properties file, we can indicate that with the spring.profile.active key and then the profile or list of profiles say dev and default comma separated. But I like specifying it external to the code, the one using the JVM argument, which can be provided when starting the app externally. Specifying it in the code, in my opinion, beats the purpose as you have to modify the app for dev and then again for prod. All right, let us see how things look. Run the project by right clicking and choosing run configuration and choosing first the dev profile and choosing run. Go to the browser, type http localhost 8080 and we see our time leaf page. Here we see our greeting hello from dev log file is dev.log and my property is my value. So it pull the right class hello class dev and pull the value hello from dev from there. Logging file is dev.log from the appropriate property file and my property is my value. So it read the common property. Let's stop the app and now right click, choose run as and this time choose the prod configuration. Let's refresh the browser and we see the right prod profile class with hello from prod, log file is prod.log and the my property is my value. Going to the log folder, we see our two log files, dev.log and prod.log. The dev.log is stating profile active is dev and the prod.log is stating that the active profile is prod. In this video, we saw how using Spring profiles, we can control which classes are created and called, which property values take effect with appropriate profiles. So this helps us use the same code base and change the behavior appropriately with appropriate profile specification. Thanks for watching.